to be said. Welcome back to the Horseman Podcast, an open form conversation about our passions, interesting topics with a free flowing structure. Today, we're excited to bring you the third episode of season two. I'm Josh. And I'm Greg. And this week, we'll be talking about the Christmas season. Yeah. And uh, the craziness of the holidays and, you know, everything in between. Yep. We're talking about part two of the holidays. Yeah. So part two of the holidays. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed uh, last week's episode. And we also hope that your Thanksgiving um, went as well um, as, uh, as, as it could. You know, each each year is different. And then once you get past Thanksgiving, you moved into Black Friday and you move into that shopping weekend. And then once December first hits, you know, it, it's almost like the thing. It's, it's a blur. It's a blur. It it and honestly, it does feel like the Christmas season starts off so early every year. I don't feel like it starts early at all. I think they just put the idea. You know, you're seeing ads in September, right? No, it's oh, it's so freaking crazy. They're like. Oh yeah! By the way, Christmas is coming. If you guys forgot, yeah, it's, just it's like, like uh, we haven't. It's like the Halloween year that yet. I forget. It's like <laughs> the year that we get presents. What? It's coming <laughs> back again this year. <laughs> I think um, I don't know. I, I so I grew up like the Christmas was always like this big family thing, and mm-hmm. it was always great, you know. But ever since I moved to Washington State, like all of my Christmases have I spent pretty much like alone, right? And I've. I've been on, like, I had this really, I had, like, this, like, really, I want to say controversial take on Christmas, which was, like, I didn't, like, if it was, like, if it disappeared, I wouldn't all be that upset about it, but I, I think the one thing that I really like about the Christmas is, one, the, the community aspect, like we were talking about last episode, but also the freaking music, man. I, like, I was ta- telling oh you before, God. like, as soon as I start- Hold up, hold up. People need context what for what about he's about to say. So Josh, the host, Josh, he'll listen to Christmas music any time of the year. Yeah. He will put it on in April, May, June, July. It doesn't matter. Like no apparent reason. So it's just like we be kicking it this one time, you know, like at the house, and then all of a sudden he busts out jingle bells. <laughs> I it's April. I st- it's April. I, I started. <laughs> what's kind of funny was like, okay, so around that time of the year, I started getting busted at work because it was like I, I would start whistling like Jingle Bells or Up on the Housetop, and and then my 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 the people who work security would be like, dude, you are either way too late or extremely early. And I'm like, oh, I'm right on time. I'm always whistling it because it is like. I don't know what it is about it. I love the music. And so I deliver I deliver pizzas for a job, and I drive all the time. And so recently, I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start listening to some trans orchestra music, like, pretty early. You know, because I love their Christmas music. If you guys haven't checked out trans Orchestra, you guys have to go listen to them. They're amazing. They're so good. And they do a great job with a lot of Christmas songs. And once I got on that path, I haven't been able to stop. I have tried... <laughs> pop punk i've tried heavy metal i've tried country i've tried pop i've tried everything i could to try and get out of that christmas like line but now it's it's every every time i get in my car that's you know that's what it is and i i don't think it's all that bad i just think you know it may it's it's a little obsessive if i start whistling it all year long yeah it doesn't stop man (laughs) it really doesn't you like you was it Ukrainian bell carol? What is it? That's what it's called. Ukrainian bell carol. Da, 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 uh, Carol of the bells. Carol of the bells. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought yeah. it was Ukrainian bell carol. <laughs> no, no. Know, carol of the bells. You know that, that's interesting because like uh, there's this. Um, what's really cool is uh, so. Um, Trans Siberian Orchestra has this song out called Sarajevo. It's like Christmas Eve, Sarajevo, whatnot. And what was really cool about this is, um, it has a little bit of carol of the bells in it but it has like a bunch of other stuff there was a um a christmas music i guess event that we did at our church a couple of years back and um my one of my very very talented uh musician friends and his family uh, got a bunch of different musicians together and it was they they, they called themselves the trans Fakir orchestra and they, <laughs> and they did the sarahevo and they did it it was 100 percent perfect right on par and it was like i'm sitting here listening to this and i'm like how the hell like i know they're just following no like i know they're just following sheet music but 
there is something about that song that just definitely d- gives it, gets me into the Christmas spirit. But there's also a lot of like strange Christmas songs. Yeah. Like I don't know if you guys have ever listened to the Holly and the Ivy song. Go listen to those lyrics. It the song doesn't make sense. There's no structure. There's no structure. There's whatsoever. no part. Uh, there's no reason for the song. No. And it's like I I get it. It's a it you you, know, you wanna the, the song is intended to be sung very slow and to reflect of that, but. Honestly, a lot of those Christmas songs just depressed the hell out of me. So I am very much of the upbeat Christmas song. So the Holly and the Ivy one that popped up was one by Hawk, the Hawk Nelson did it. And I was like, listen to it, and I was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Let me rewrite this, redo the song again. Let me look at the lyrics. Okay, this makes no like no sense whatsoever of the song. And they're talking about the Holly and the Ivy, and, and it's a crown, and every once in a they pop in something, but... The, the way that the lyrics are fashioned, it's in fashion to paragraphs of four, four lines. And the first two lines are about the Holly and the Ivy, and the last two lines about the birth of Jesus Christ. And it's like, it, it doesn't make sense whatsoever. Like, if someone wants to explain it to me, that's great. I'm still going to think the song is incredibly weird. Yes. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just one of those yeah, things. Yeah, it's, it's just, just weird. Uh, Josh was showing me the lyrics last night, and I was like, this sounds like gibberish. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, like... I don't even know the song. I'm not like a big Christmas song fanatic. Yeah. You know, I just know Ukrainian Bell Care or Carol of the Bells. Yeah. You know, that one. You know, then I know the Mariah Carey one. Yeah. You know, um, what is All it? I Want for Christmas yeah. is You. There's a bunch of different versions of that. I think the two, um, I think the two that you should probably go check out, um, which we'll call it, um, oh, the Piano Guys did a version what? Um, of um, All I Want for Christmas is You. And it's really cool. So the, so the freaking video is legos right yeah. and um the it's a lego recreation of the top christmas movies mm-hmm. so we've got like home alone in there they've got elf they've got charlie brown it's so you know it's called charlie brown christmas they've got like a bunch of this and the song and it's it's pianos and cellos and drums and yeah that is the, you know the usual piano guy style it's so freaking cool and the other one was by Lindsay sterling she did a cover of oh, all, I, all I Want for Christmas Is You, and I that 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 one that version by Lindsey Sterling is when you listen when I listened to it I was like this is really creative because there's a lot of bouncy parts to it oh yeah that really flow well together and she's, oh, she is so talented, talented with the violin just talented. unbelievably pow- talented but you know the music get kind of gets me into the feels a little bit. And I think the reason for that is because for a long time I performed every Christmas Eve service at my church. Oh, okay. And there's a lot of songs that I'm like I can't listen to because of that, because like it, it gets me into like a depre- depressed state because I don't have it anymore kind of way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, I wish I had better memories with these songs. But it's like you know thinking back and it's like you know I'm never gonna be able to do that again. Um, at least in that part. And there's like a lot of songs in there that are really really cool. There's a there's one it's a Go Tell on the Mountain by Mercy Me did it and they this is this really like really jazzy bluish Go Tell on the Mountain and then Tenth Avenue North does a it was either Deck the Halls or Ding Dong Merrily I think it's Deck the Halls Deck the Halls and Oh Come All You Faithful or it's like it's a swing like it's a swing band oh no, that's fine and it's like oh my God I could listen to those songs like for freaking ever but I think the music plays into the whole like Christmas feelings part of it yes. Um, what would you say is like if you could look back last like ten years, like your top, I guess top two Christmas memories that come to your head? I have two actually. Okay, I'm glad you said two. <laughs> so, all right, I'll go with um this one. This one's kind of like a nice, you know, family fun one, and then yeah. I'll tell my rager. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so this must have been back in two thousand and 16 no 2015 um uh, christmas and what was going on at the time was i was living in seattle and uh, my family is from the east side of the mountains okay. uh, over in uh, the yakima area and i had purchased the bus ticket uh because i didn't have my car up here uh to go over to uh, yakima and I, I worked at Starbucks. I was a full-time student, and I couldn't get over there because it had snowed over the pass, wow. you know, and I had bought my ticket to the last possible day, which was uh, 
because they were only going to be running those buses on uh, on December 23rd, and then the next time they would be running them is uh, uh, December 27th. Yeah. And uh, December 23rd came around. Um, we were snowed out, and they're like, hold up. We might run a bus, you know, Christmas Eve, you know, to get over there. Um, Christmas Eve day. And... I was like, oh, okay. But they're like, you have to come here in the morning. I'm like, okay. So I stay the night over there at the airport, over here at Steetech. The morning comes. The pass is still closed. And, um, oh, this was what was crazy. Um, we actually got on the bus on the 23rd. Mm. Um, and we rode it. And we got all the way to the top of the pass, and they turned us around. Oh, no. Oh, and, God. and because they closed the pass once we got there so that was really terrible so they took us back and then they're like it's okay we'll run a bus on the 24th the pass will be clean and all of that just come back here in the morning so we come back here in the morning the pass is still closed and then they're like sorry and like i stayed the night at the airport and i'm like sorry guy they're like sorry guys um i guess you all have to go home so i'm like yeah all right so like i get back on the light rail you know i take it all the way back you know to downtown uh seattle you know that what is that like an hour and a half yeah it's ride, about an hour and a half ride. Uh, yeah um ride back so i get back um i walk in and then my business uh, manager you know at the time or my landlord at the time and she's like what are you doing back here you know i thought you were going down to you know the east side of the mountains uh, with your family i'm like yeah I just spent the night, you know, just gave her the whole spiel, you know, like we got to the top of that, like, and then, and then we're just like talking back and forth, you know, it's like, oh, dude, that's rough. I'm so sorry. And all of a sudden I get a text, you know, and they're like, all right, you guys, you know, the text didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but, you guys, uh, this guys, is what we're doing, right? Yeah. They're like, this is what's up. So for the first 40 people that show up, we're going to run a special bus. We're going to go down to Portland you know, the long way around the Columbia, you know, get around this, uh, um, what's it called? The pass. Uh, to get around the mountain pass. Yeah. You know, we're going to go down, ri- drive along the Columbia so River. So passes were closed? Yeah, White Pass and, and yeah, Snoqualmie. And the Snoqualmie. Yeah. So it's just like you had to go around. And I was just like, oh, my God. And <laughs> she's like, what? I'm like, if I get to the airport and it's like the first 40 40- – but I'm like, I will never make it if I take the light rail. She's like, say no more. Get in my car right now. We're oh, taking wow. you. We're taking you to the airport. So I get there. I'm like, thank you, Michelle, so much. And I'm just running, right, to get to the bus. And guess what? I'm number 39. Nice. And I get nice. on the bus. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thank God. And it's just like, sweet. And, you know. And at this time, I had already called my parents. I told my family that. I'm not going to be making it, yeah. you know, to Christmas. I'm going to be over here in Seattle. And um, I wasn't going to be able to get the time off, you know, from work and all of that. They're like, oh, they were, like, pretty bummed, you know. And we, my family was going to have a big get-together, right? So everybody knew I wasn't going to make it. But little did they know I got on this bus. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am riding on the bus. Um, and... We get to uh, Toppenish, you know, that's about like maybe 30 minutes outside of uh, Yakima. And my phone is at 1%. Oh, no. And I'm like, well, there's only one way for me to get back. I have to call a friend and I have to make this one phone call count. Yeah. <laughs> so I call my um, best friend, Eric. Um, up. I'm like, hey, Eric, it's just like, I don't really have a lot of time. Um, are, I'm like, are you busy? He's like, no, I'm like, are you going to be busy in the next half hour? No, I'm like, well, I'm riding in from, uh, you know, from Seattle right now on the bus. My phone's at one percent. Can you pick me up at the airport? <laughs> and <laughs> and he's like, I was like, I was like, can you be there? He's like, yeah, I'll be there. And then boom, phone dies right then and there. And, uh, it's like the payphone thing, right? You only yeah. got like thirty seconds. <laughs> only got thirty seconds. Boom, my phone dies. Yeah. And I show up here at the airport. And I'm like, God, I hope you heard that last part. You know, I'm hoping that transmission went through. And it did. And he was waiting right there. You know, I nice. got off the bus. And I'm like, dude, Eric, I owe you such a big sauce. What a great friend. I, I love that kid. 
uh, to death. He's the same age, but he's a kid to me. <laughs> um, Sometimes uh, they all are. <laughs> they, <laughs> everybody, everybody's a kid to me, and um, he takes me back. Um, like my parents, and this is perfect timing because they were all at church, right? You know, so I'm like, so it's just like Eric drops me off. You know, I get like a cup of cocoa, you know, just like kicking it by, you know, like my parents' fireplace, you know, and like I'm playing some, they had some Christmas music, so I turned it up just a little bit, you know, <laughs> and uh, they walk in, you know, like my brother, you know, like my mom, dad, and I'm like, oh, what took you so long? <laughs> 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 they're like Greg. So so, uh, they're like Greg. And they're like what? It's like we thought we were gonna be here. Yeah, you thought. And, like, and they're like, "How did you get here?" It's like, "Oh, dude, I I kicked to the Santa for a quick second. He dropped me off. <laughs> he gave me a ride here. You know." And I'm like, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> yeah, we came homies. He was just like, "Hey, can you give me a ride?" He's like, "Yeah, no problem." Yeah, it's right. like so. It, it was great. And then what I had also done as well, too, I'm like, dude, this is, like, the perfect opportunity. No one knows I'm back. So it's just, like, everybody just go over, you know, be, like, mingling. And then I'm going knock on the door. Then I'm going to show up. And they're like, oh, dude, that's great, you know. So it's just, like, everybody's over. You know, they're having a grand old time. You know, it's just, like, oh, wait, you know, 20, 30 minutes. You know, build the suspense. You know, everybody's at the party now. You know, yeah. Enjoy. And then I'm knocking on the door. They're like, who's knocking? You know? <laughs> and I'm like, what's up? What's up? <laughs> and then great. they're just like, what's up? And they're like, we thought you were stuck. It's like, how did you get over here? And it's just like, caught a ride with Santa, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Like, you're just, like, showing up and, like, surprising your family and, and, oh, yeah. and shit like that. That's, that's pretty, like, that. I think that's pretty cool, you know? But we also, we got to give the shout out to the true MVPs of this story. Um, we got to shout out to Michelle, who was like, oh, fuck, we got to get you to that bus, you yeah. know. Drove me from downtown Seattle back to SeaTac. You know, I was just like, get in the car. We're going. She was hauling. She, she wasn't, like, driving. She's like, we got. She wasn't kidding around. She wasn't kidding around. So we got it. Like, she drove me to the airport. But, like, massive big shout out to Michelle. Then, you know, massive shout out to Bel Air. Um, I think they're called shuttles. They do it around the Yakima Air for taking the time to readjust. And they're like, you know what? Oh, you know, screw it. We're going to make this happen. Right. You know, for all these uh, different people and families. You know how easy it would have been for them? For them to be to like, like, we're you know busy. What? Yeah, we're, we're, this, this isn't going to work. You, you can't get over the past. But for them to actually take the time and go, you know what? All right, first 40 people get the bus, we'll take you down to Portland, then we'll take you to Yakima. Yeah. That's pretty freaking sweet. Like, I don't know of any companies who would do that. Yeah, there's not too many. Um, hey, talk about the Christmas spirit, right? Yeah, talk about the Christmas spirit. And then, shout out to my best friend, Eric, <laughs> for being, like, the t the guy to call. Right. You know, it's like, all right, I got to pick this guy right? up, Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I love that kid. Yeah, so. there's, yeah there, there's, I think there's one holiday that, the one Christmas that I think that really stands out to me actually happened last year. Oh, really? And, um, yeah, so um, we had – at the time, we were having a shortage of uh, people to, to work shifts and stuff like that. Okay. So the shift that I was working, I worked 11 to 7. And we didn't have someone who was going to work the 7 to 3 shift. So I told my manager, hey, you know what? I'll work at 16. Um, I'll work at 16 on Christmas. No worries. I'll take the holiday pay. It'll be fine. And it was like because of my schedule, it ended up getting like 15 hours of holiday pay or something like that. But what made it really, really super cool was, was uh, so Christmas Eve came and went. My shift lead went home, and guess who showed up as the second shift lead who works the six to two shift? And I, I gotta say this: the shift lead who worked the six to two shift, I took, her, I, I did end up taking her job. But I tell you what, I didn't really have as many good coworkers as her around. Like she was like. She's one of those coworkers where you really want to have around. She just she oh, just yeah. knows how to make things better. She is like she's just a few a few years older than the older than me, and she's like an older sister kind of thing. She really took it upon herself to make sure that people really felt adjusted to the place, right? So she shows up on Christmas morning, and I'm like I'm like, oh, you know what? This is gonna be a great Christmas. We didn't do a lick of work. We sat at the desk and we just kind of chit chatted. And about halfway through, our manager texts us, and the property manager was supposed to get, like, Christmas food handled and stuff like that, and it didn't show up at all. Oh. And, uh, yeah, yeah, there was, like, the, the, he was supposed to, like, have Christmas breakfast, like, delivered there or whatnot. 
So our manager texts us and she's like, hey, you know, did breakfast arrive? We're like, uh, no. And she goes, okay, hang on. She goes, what do you want? So we just send her like this. We send her like what we want. And she goes, okay, no worries and takes care of it. Oh, and, that's awesome. Yeah, so we're just sitting there at the desk. I have a photo somewhere sometime um, of, of us sitting at the desk eating. And it was just – yes, there wasn't the whole family gathering and the presents and the tree and this and that and the whole you know traditions that I grew up with. But the fact that I got to spend Christmas with someone who was like honestly like pretty amazing, that, oh, that, yeah. that was a, that's a Christmas that's going to stand out to me. And what ended was it was even crazier about it was – that was our last time working together, but we didn't even know it. Because oh, when wow. she went on vacation, when she came back, she ended up getting transferred to another site. Oh, it was wow. the last time we worked together, and the last time we worked together was Christmas. And it was so freaking cool because it was just like – it was probably one of the best Christmases I had in Washington because I came home and I had two friends in Virginia who sent me care packages oh, for, that's for cool. Christmas. And so it was like, and then my parents also had sent a care package. So I came home, I had three care packages waiting for me to, you know, for Christmas presents to open up. And that was really freaking sweet. Um, and that was pretty, that, that was really cool. That was a cool moment. Um, you know, because there's a lot of traditions that my family had growing up. Um, I think, well, can you name like two Christmas traditions your, your family had growing up? Like that really stood out to you? Um, I don't know, really, honestly. Um. We don't – I know we open presents, you know. I think stockings are always last, yeah. you know. Um, but we don't really have any traditions, okay. uh, really. Um, I think it's just, like, very stereotypical c and &E Christian, yeah. you know, type where it's just, like, go to church, yep. you know, um, have a nice dinner, you know. Um, yeah. I think – because, like, I think our, our – like a couple of the traditions that we had in our family was like the Christmas Eve after the Christmas Eve service, mm -hmm. we take all the leftover cookies and we go distribute them to the emergency dispatchers. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, we, um, there was one time, <laughs> my uh, my my mom and then the other friend we had with us, they uh, they startled the uh, people at the sheriff's department. Oh they went, shit! They went to the, <laughs> they went to the back door instead of the front door or something oh, yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, we did that. But after we dropped off the cookies there, we went and saw the Christmas lights in the in in the oh, some of the neighborhoods, fun. and that was like that was really freaking cool. But I think the weirdest tradition my family had, which some some people hear it and they go, "That's really odd." Was so when we were younger, okay. um, my mom didn't really allow us to have a lot of sugary cereals growing up, right? That's it fair. was like it's like you know under twelve grams of sugar was kind of like the cutoff, right? But around Christmas time, my parents were like any type of sugary cereal you want, we will get you. And we woke up on Christmas morning. The first present all of us opened was there's a box of cereal waiting for us at the end of our bed. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so that's why. That's, that's, how actually, my, that's actually a really good one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. People are like, that's weird, like Christmas cereal. But, like, that's the whole thing behind how the Cocoa Puffs thing got started. Oh, yeah. Because I was never so allowed sense. to have Cocoa Puffs throughout the year because it was too sugary. Mm -hmm. But around Christmas, I'd always have it. That's and, cool. You know, now being an adult, I can just walk down to Safeway and buy a box of no, Cocoa Puffs. No, you can't Puffs. do that. Just do that, man. But it's there's <laughs> something about – and that's why every Christmas, no matter where I am, I have a bowl of Cocoa Puffs on Christmas. That, that is just it. No matter where I am, that's that, why. That, I have. That's actually a really cool. It's it, cool, it's uh, one of those quirky traditions where you go, "That's actually pretty insane." No, that's fun, man. <laughs> but and in, you know, there's a lot of like traditions I want to carry over and stuff like that. But there's like, there's a lot of like interesting traditions I want to do. Like I want to see like one of the ones I think would be interesting is if you hide the stockings. No, I wouldn't do that. That's you work, man. No, man, that's too much work. Like, Why? <laughs> dude, it's enough to open the gift. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> enough to prepare and wrap and, and open the and gift. gift. Why would you hide it? Why right? would I hide it? It's just like I put it right there for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, but like, what's kind of a cool tradition? Um, I guess you know my family does is uh, I know like a lot of people after a while, um, like they they are they all forget about Santa then they just put their names on and my family still does that yeah, um, yeah my parents did that too I mean, for a long still time do yeah. that, you know like even now you know in my you know late 20s we still do that and I think that's actually really important um even though like we all know the truth you know but still I think it's like the fun and imagination behind it that um that we should never forget about that those moments you know it's just like as a kid you know like 
I do personally believe that there is magic out there in the world. It may not necessarily like be Santa Claus, yeah. but it's just like, but the magic behind it, you know. Yeah, I you think know, maybe there's someone like James Penguin. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? I don't know who <laughs> James Penguin is. You don't know who James Penguin no, is? No, who's he James? Runs, Peng- he runs Santa's SCFBI. What? Santa Claus FBI. What? You've never heard of James Penguin? Never heard of James Penguin. Oh my God! Okay, so moment. okay, so James Penguin is like, so you know, like, um, you know, you know, Santa watches over us and stuff like that. But you yeah. know, like every year, there's more and more kids, so he gets overwhelmed, right? Well, one Christmas, and walks a night in shining polyester, which is Penguin, James Penguin, and he is Santa's. How is there spy. penguins in the North Pole, man? I... It's not penguins. In, it, no, no, no. It's it's not penguins in the North Pole. He is just he lives in the South Pole, and he just keeps an eye on us for Santa. You've never heard of James Never Penguin. heard. Why is Santa taking a vacation <laughs> in the South Pole anyway? You know, sometimes Santa just needs a little bit of help. It's the clause in his contract. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I have been dying to use that clause pun for like 20 minutes now. <laughs> Because ever since you were talking about the bus ticket and you're like, you rose Santa, I was like, oh, was there a clause in the ticket, right? It's like, you know, ah, oh, come on. No, that was, that was good. That was a great payoff right there. And, you know, yeah, there is something cool about that whole Santa thing. Because people were like, oh, Santa, Santa. I was like, guys, can you just have, like, I know you're adults, but can you just scratch your head into just the tiniest bit of imagination? I think it's fun, man. It's so much fun. Like, even when I had, like, Christmases alone, I even though I buy gifts for myself, right? You know, like, I just wrapped them, you know? I put one from Santa, you know? It was because, it was fun, man. Yeah, because, you're, like, you see, you know, and you're, you just, you, you run back to, like, the childhood happiness of, like, Santa Claus coming to town. It's, yeah. like, it's great. It's just, I, I get it. Christmas is supposed to be, like, I get what people try to make Christmas out to be, but... I think, you know, the biggest thing, you know, that actually really hurts all of us is us trying to define what Christmas is. Yeah. In reality, there's a lot of things that yep. um, is Christmas for us. And I think we should all, you know, take the time and realize there's a bunch of different magic and wonderful things in the world that help all of us, yeah. you know, during this time of year. And it's just like we should respect that for everybody around yeah. because, dude, that Christmas story that you told me with the cereal, oh my gosh, I yeah, didn't no, know that. That's like, cool. That's fun. Yeah, that's a tradition. That's I so want to continue. Yeah. That's a tradition. I, I, that's like, magical. If I like when I like when I get my own family, like you know, when I have a wife and kids like that, like that's like something that I want to do because it's really fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's there was a reason for it, mm-hmm. but after a while, it just kind of became a that's tradition. Fun. And it was it it was a, it was a lot of fun because when you wake up in the I remember um, you know it's it's kind of hard for anybody to fall asleep on Christmas Eve. Oh yeah. And, you know especially after you know because as I explained earlier for years I performed on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. You know I was. You're just riding that high after I the was, performance. Exactly. And I mean my first ever like memory was like you know singing Mary Did You Know with my piano my sister on the piano like you know after you get done with the performance you're like that was so freaking cool and then you go Christmas the next day you can barely sleep. I remember being awake when my when my um, parents would bring in the Christmas boxes. It'd be like two, three o'clock in the morning. And they're still doing presents and, and and crap like that. And of course, all of us are gonna be up. And the parents know that you're gonna be up. You're like, you're like hey, they don't know I'm awake. It's like, yes, they know you're awake. But guess what? <laughs> you still get to wake up every morning and open that box of cereal. You know what it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. I knew that it was gonna be Cocoa Puffs, but it was so cool to like wake up and like ah cereal like sugar cereal on christmas and you know my brother and i would sit across from our beds and just because the rule in our house was unless mom and dad are up you can't leave your rooms Mm -hmm. because uh there was one christmas where a bunch of us left the room and um we saw like a bunch of the presents stuff like that we got into so much trouble oh yeah man (laughs) but you know that's that's because when you when before how like how our house was like prior to the renovation was we had um where the living room is now in my parents household that was like just a garage and where the dining room is now, that was a living room. So all the presents just kind of like um, overflew, over overflew, flood the room. And so you could see it from your bedroom, but now it's like off in the off in the living room. Also, that's a, that's another good point. Um, I don't I don't know if uh, this happened to you, but this definitely happened to me. The older I got, the more and more, the less and less I asked for. No, I'm asking for it a lot. So. Yeah, I know because it was a couple years ago. I remember it was like 20. I want to say it was 2016. 
And I remember this very vividly because I had just started vlogging. I was like, I want a vlog camera. So I asked my parents, I was like, I want a vlog camera, I want a longboard, and I want a, like a World War II documentary. And I got all three of them. And for the first time in my life, I actually said I got everything on my Christmas list. And so from then on, I was always like, you know what? Get stuff that you, you – you get, get just a few items because I noticed the next year I did that, I actually got more than I asked for. Because my parents were like, oh, you're only asking for three items. So you get the three items, and it's like, oh, just throw in a bunch of other uh, other stuff. And I don't know, like, I guess it's like the older I get, the, the less and less material stuff I needed. I really hung on to that family part of Christmas. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the biggest present I could get. You know, at the end of the year, I saw my brother, who I only saw maybe once or twice a year. I saw my sister, who I saw barely. And, you know, I saw some other friends that, I you know, I, I usually don't see around Christmas time. And that's... That's a great thing about Christmas is you get that, again, like we said in the last episode, the community aspect of it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know uh, we're hitting that time. Do you yeah. have time for one more Christmas story? Go for it, dude. All right. It's, I'm, I'm all about the Christmas stories. Okay, man. so this one's so fun. This is a rager. So this was uh, back in uh, 2017, and my friend Yesenia, uh, she, she's a lovely lady. I I love her to death. And um, she had invited me. She was working at Costco at the time. And she had asked me to be her date, you know, to this Costco Christmas party. I was like, yeah, I would love to go with you. Yeah. So um, we go to the Costco um, Christmas party. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to a Costco Christmas party. (laughs) But they're big, man. Like, the whole staff is there from every department. She worked in the call center but it's just like everybody that's on the floor like dude there's a lot of people in there it almost looked like a whole costco like <laughs> like i was like wow there's a lot of people that the work whole here. memberships the here. Whole, whole the whole membership was here <laughs> and what was crazy is that they're giving away a bunch of different things throughout the whole day throughout the whole time and they had an open bar you know so i was like oh fuck yeah you know just being you know the younger 20 year old self that i was it's just like oh yeah dude i'm going to take advantage of the open bar <laughs> like oh my god so it's just like i probably had like a couple mixed drinks in me you know and like there was no beer drink that night you know it was just like all mixed drinks you know we're all like riding high and what was pretty cool about costco is like every half hour they would uh give out three prizes so you, you never wanted to be the first two because the first two were just gift cards you know but the third one they would be raffling off, you know, like a vacation, you know, a sound system, a TV, oh God. you know, like what, like just big gifts, you know, like a grill, you know, like all of that. And, um, and the only way that you could get it is if you put your name in the raffle and I put my name into the raffle. I was just like, I'm here. Might as well. Right. right. So I was there and, you know, it's just like, we've been drinking all night and then you know the guy from costco he was just like you know uh it's like probably around 11 o'clock at night you know it's just like (laughs) we're all fairly drunk at like this point and he's like okay you guys this round we're going to offer two gift cards to here and a sound system and i look at everybody at my table right and it's just like guys watch this i'm going to win this fucking sound system (laughs) (laughs) you know and they're like yeah yeah you know it's just like we've all we're just all having a good time and here we are just like listening intently and they say the first two names right they're like okay and then it's like the moment of truth and they're like greg said i'm like yes you know just like <laughs> jump up and and everybody just turned their head because it's like fairly quiet i'm like just freaking out i'm like yes you know just like my drunk self i'm like oh fuck yeah yeah <laughs> just like yeah just like t- screaming at the top of my lungs you know and, and like i just remember looking at everybody in my table they're in shock <laughs> and then i hold it they're like, and then, like they're just dying laughing too you know they're like it's like this it's like this kid just <laughs> And so it's just like I'm walking up there like all proudly. You know, my friend Noah at the time goes, It doesn't even work here! <laughs> <laughs> like I grabbed the sound system. He's stealing the show! You know, he's stealing the show! 
I, and I walk back with this huge sound system. <laughs> Everyone's like, what the they're, fuck? They're, they're, they're just, and I sit down and set the sound system. And then they're just all looking at me and just like, this. <laughs> you can't help but laugh. I'm like, cheers to that, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Getting drunk at, like, a, a Costco party? Oh yeah, man. God. Like, it wasn't even my own Christmas party. It was someone else's. <laughs> It's kind of funny is um, you know the, the weird thing is that I've, I think I've only been to like one Christmas party, like probably one. There was a couple of years ago. It was like a classmate of mine. It was it was at the time that we were probably super close at this point. But mm-hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was an odd that was an odd Christmas party. That was really that was really weird. I think I think that was the time I was like I don't think I'm in for Christmas parties. I was like there's way too many people here, and that's when I started noticing that my my circle of celebratory like friends, like people I want to like celebrate with, celebrate things with, is like six. It's like once it's any more than six people in a, in a party, I'm just like I'm I'm gonna go sit in the corner and just and, and 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 just and just drink a little bit. I'm just gonna sit in the corner and drink. You guys have fun. Once it gets over six people, like even we were in the house, mm-hmm. you know, it's like once it get past six people, it's like this is a little too much. Yeah. And um, but you know that's that's the fun part about Christmas is like it doesn't matter which six people you celebrate with, just as long as you're celebrating with the people that matter most to you on the Christmas holidays. Yes. Um. So that does wrap it up for this episode. We went a little longer than usual, but it's Christmas, so um, we hope you guys uh, enjoyed the episode. Again, uh, this one comes out on Tuesday at uh, at five p.m. on uh, the Forty Two Studios uh, channel. Um. Any last thoughts about Christmas, Greg? No. I hope all of you guys have a very happy holiday. And yeah. we'll see you next week. Yeah, we will see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Peace out.